Hello everyone and welcome back to Mini SE in Focus. In this video we will take a look at the performance display along with an overview of the regenerative braking system in my 2022 Mini Cooper SE. I will also cover in which circumstances the regenerative braking system is activating your brake lights. The performance display is the yellow and white gauge located on the left side of the instrument cluster. The gauge has three sections. E-Power takes up most of the gauge and indicates how much battery power you have available to use. The needle will move up and down the power curve depending on how far you press the accelerator and is an indication of driving efficiency. There are circumstances where you might not have the full battery power available to use. The most typical circumstance is under very cold weather conditions. The drive ready state is the small gap between e-power and charge on the gauge and it indicates when the Mini is turned on and ready to drive. It's the equivalent of cranking your gas powered car and letting it sit idle. When the needle is sitting at the ready position, no battery current is flowing to the EV motor for either acceleration or regeneration. Let's talk about radio ready versus drive ready. If you push the start stop button with your foot off the brake pedal, then radio ready state is activated where most systems, including the infotainment system, are available to use. The needle on the performance display will remain in the off position. If you press the brake pedal and then push the start-stop button, drive ready state is activated. Now there's a very nice design touch here. When you enter the car, the start-stop button will pulse with a dim yellow light. But if you press the brake pedal, the light pulses and gets noticeably brighter to get your attention. So here I'm activating radio ready state. The control and check lights run their self tests, but the motor is still off. I then put my foot on the brake pedal and push the button again to enter drive ready state. Please note that you are not able to exit the car with drive ready state active. If the driver's door is opened with your seatbelt off, then the car turns off and reverts to radio ready state. One other item to note here, the Mini SE is thankfully smart enough to stop you from pulling away if it is still plugged in. The third section of the performance display is the charge indicator. The word charge here indicates that the battery is currently charging, meaning the regenerative braking system has been activated. So let's talk about regenerative brakes. Your cool looking Mini SE moving down the road has kinetic energy. The faster you zoom, the more kinetic energy builds up and the more effort it takes to slow the car back down. On regular cars, old fashioned brakes take the brunt of force to dissipate this energy in the form of heat and worn out brake pads. EV car engineers realized that part of this energy can be captured and put back into the battery charge. When you take your foot off the accelerator, the EV motor is reversed and becomes a generator, converting the kinetic energy into electricity for the battery. The switch for regen mode is located to the left of the start-stop. Toggle it either direction to change its setting. With the LED lit up, low energy recovery mode is activated. One of the two yellow bars in the gauge disappears, and you will notice the braking effect is not as dramatic. If you toggle the switch again, then high energy recovery is activated, and the LED turns off. The second yellow bar reappears in the gauge. At the low setting, the system provides 0.11 gravity units of deceleration, and on the higher setting, it provides 0.19 Gs. So that is your high-level overview of regenerative braking. But what does all of this mean for your actual driving experience? I have three words for you. One pedal drive. In 2019, BMW Mini decided to put their brand new regenerative braking system to the ultimate test. Nürburgring, or the Green Hell, is a legendary racing circuit in Germany. Nürburgring has a one lap distance of 13 miles. It has over 900 feet of elevation changes and most challenging for the Mini, 73 corners. Now, if Mini can lap the green hell without using its brakes, I think you can handle the drive to your local grocery store on one pedal, don't you? 
One pedal driving your Mini just takes a little bit of practice. Once you get used to it, it is hard to go back to coasting in a regular car. Yet all this talk of regen braking begs the question, do you know what the regen system is doing with your brake lights behind your back? I set up a little experiment to monitor when the regen system is using my brake lights. I took two phones and started their videos at the same time. This just made it easier for me to sync them up later when editing. I mounted one of them on the tailgate pointed at the brake light. Don't worry, that one did not fall off. And the other mounted inside pointed at the regen gauge. As you watch this, keep an eye on the needle when it enters and exits the charge zone and see what the brake light does. I did not touch my brake pedal during these tests. Notice that the regen turns the brake lights off when you come to a complete stop, a safety issue for you to be aware of. Now see what happens here as I approach a stop sign on a downhill slope. To sum up these results, just be aware of the following. One, as soon as the needle enters the charge zone on the gauge, your brake lights are on. Two, if the regen system brings you to a complete stop, your brake lights turn off. I'm in the habit of putting my foot on the brake pedal whenever I come to a stop. Three, if the car is in drive, the Mini will keep you from rolling backward after it stops, but it will not prevent you from continuing to roll forward. Four, if the car is in reverse, the Mini will keep you from rolling forward after it stops, but it will not prevent you from continuing to roll backward. And finally, for anyone worried about how often their brake lights are coming on, I wanted to mention cruise control. I find that the cruise control does a much better job than I do of keeping the Mini in that sweet spot ready zone when you're at driving speed. The brake lights come on less often. And that's it. If you hung in there with me up to this point, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you found this video helpful. See you on the next one.